Hello, Minnesota. Welcome to the Tony Hernandez Show. I'm your host, Tony Hernandez, and we are in mid-October here. Still beautiful weather. We have a great show, an action-packed show. As you know, Election Day is coming up here in just a few weeks, so we have a, a number of candidates that are going to be on. Uh, we have the Libertarian ticket for governor. We're also going to be hearing from a couple State House representative, representative candidates, uh, John Heyer and Anthony Meschke. So uh, with that, I'm going to bring on uh, our first guests here. we got Chris and Chris with the Libertarian Party. Lip Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thanks yep. for having us. And of course, we have uh, Mr. Thank Jeffrey you. Williams. Jeff, uh, thanks I for dressing up. the news last week that uh, we're coming down to the last three Tony Hernandez shows after being on air for almost two years. It uh, doesn't mean that I'm not going to be doing any more TV stuff, but just need to uh, take a little break. And uh, Jeffrey Williams over here is going to be uh, taking over the show. It's not going to be called the Tony Hernandez show, though. Sorry for that, We Jeff. are going to be making Your ratings change. would be much better if it was, but... Uh, well, we'll find out, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank, you, thank you for holding my seat for me. I mean, thank you for being a good placeholder till I was ready. No problem. No well, problem. Before we go too far, quick shout-out to Tony here, who I had to bring something out of my basement. Ooh. You know, a little oh, nice. souvenir to show all the, the fans in oh, the yeah. room of Tony. Oh, yeah, 2012. Hopefully. That was Hopefully. just two years yeah. ago. Yeah, I've got a pile of these if anyone wants them. Five cents. So you two, uh, you two gentlemen are running uh, for the Minnesota governor's seat under the libertarian uh, endorsement and mm -hmm. uh, running as a third party. Uh, tell me, what, what exactly does the libertarian party stand for, Chris? The libertarian party stands for social freedoms and economic freedoms. We're socially liberal and economically conservative. So when I say socially liberal, our platforms, for example, we would like to eliminate the war on drugs. We would like you to be able to buy beer on Sundays and buy fireworks. Um, on our economically conservative platform, we would like to eliminate income tax for people and their businesses. And we would like to shrink government 10%. Mm -hmm. So that's us in, in a nutshell. So i got to say, Chris, that I was in uh, Michigan. Uh, it was over in, in July. I was there for the 4th of July mm -hmm. time. And uh, they had just done a full legalization of, of their fireworks. Mm -hmm. um, they were announcing it. There's booms all over. And then they also uh, had uh, passed a law similar to what they have in California uh, for the legalization of marijuana for uh, medicinal purposes. Can you just talk about the effects that uh, legalization of, of, of different ind industries would have on the Minnesota economy? Well, I mean, let's talk first of all about legalization of medical marijuana. Uh, we do have uh, legislation that's been passed in Minnesota, but it's very watered down. Uh, there's some... Most restrictive in the yeah, nation. I mean, there's exclusions, mm. soldiers with post-traumatic stress disorder. I mean, talk about a, a population that we should be serving with necessary medication to, to you know, counter those types of things. Uh, Angela Brown, a, a mother, she's got a son who's got uh, issues from a traumatic brain injury. Medical marijuana is what he needs, and she got arrested for it. There's prosecution in, in process right now against her. She's a mother trying to take care of her child, and the state came in and said, nope, that's not the way you can do it. You, you don't know what's best for your child. We do. Uh, on the economic side, obviously, if we opened up recreational marijuana, now it becomes the same as alcohol sales. So you can regulate it, you can tax it, you can sell it in stores, all those types of things. There's a huge market for it. It's all hand ha happening under the table. If we can make that a legal product, then there's tax revenue. So It seems to me that there's a, a bit of an appetite for uh, legalizing medicinal marijuana in Minnesota. Uh, and the, the politicians were kind of pushing back, and it seemed to be some type of a compromise. But, it, but if you actually read this particular law, uh, it, it only allowed for, I believe, one or two uh, manufacturers of this oil, mm -hmm. restricting the use. And also the people who had to uh, go ahead and apply to get this type of a license, I think they had to pay twenty grand up front yeah. Yeah. just to have their application non -refundable. submitted. And is that similar to what you would support, or can you talk about what it, what precisely would you support in terms of policy, Chris? The uh, I don't see a reason for a twenty thousand dollar permit to apply to get in the business. That's non refundable. Um, you know, you talk about how restrictive it is. Chris talked about it. It excludes 25,000 people that, that should be getting it right now. It basically gives rise to the, the drug gangs, um, so it increases violence in our streets. 
we wholeheartedly believe the entire war on drugs is just an abysmal failure. Marijuana doesn't ruin your life. The police ruin your life when they catch you with marijuana. It's proven education, medical treatment, tolerance are more effective than criminalization and incarceration. So how closely are you following what's going on with Washington and Colorado now that they've legalized for both medicinal and for recreational purposes? Well, very closely. I, I think we would like Minnesota to get to that spot too because their tax revenues have gone up, their crime has gone down, mm -hmm. which is totally opposite of what every, every police organization tells you. And Mark Dayton unfortunately follows what the police organizations tell him to do, which is why he threatened to veto the whole thing if they didn't strip out the PTSD and chronic pain treatments allowed in this bill. I thought it was pretty interesting in, in uh, the one debate I saw with Jeff Johnson and uh, Mark Dayton. I don't know if Hannah was at this particular debate, but uh, it, it came up how uh, Mark Dayton uh, actually advised uh, a mother to uh, purchase marijuana illegally on the streets in Minnesota to, to take care of her son's needs. But uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to be honest, I, I got mixed feelings on that because it shouldn't come to that where you have right. to go out on the street in a dangerous situation to get the medicine your son needs. On the other hand, he's saying, hey, people want marijuana, they should have marijuana, go get marijuana. Yeah. Yeah. And it's an eventuality. I mean, it's going to be legal someday uh, all across the country. So we're afraid to be at the leading edge of that for whatever reason. Why should we be the 50th state to go legal? Uh, if we're third or fourth, why is that a problem? So, so Minnesota is a, a state that has uh, currently three major parties. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the Republican Party, the, the DFL, and then the Independence Party. In order to be become a, a major party or have major party status, you need to have, uh, I believe it's at least 5% 5 5 of the mm -hmm. general election mm -hmm. vote. Mm -hmm from the governor's election, is that correct? It has to come a from state -wide any statewide state election. Any statewide any election. State -wide so election. Libertarian Party is no, not currently a major party status. Uh, there was some controversy. Uh, Hannah Nicollet, who's running for governor under the IP uh, endorsement, she was not allowed at the most recent uh, governor's debate. My question for you is, have uh, some of these forums and debates that have been held for the governor's candidates across the state, have they reached out to you guys and, and invited you to uh, come to any of the debates or forums? Zero. Right. Zero. I have a stack of letters of rejections from every host of every debate, including the major political parties. Um, and right now, the two parties, GOP and DFL, if it's a two-party debate, they're the same party. Where's the second party, is my opinion. They team up with the media. Forum News Service in Duluth has, has endorsed Jeff Johnson. They changed the criteria to be in their debate from previously 5% in the statewide election to currently polling at 10% or more. They're all in bed together as a, as a menage a trois of statism over the people. So they're trying to reduce the IP to minor party status by exclusion right now. Now, what inspired you to run for governor? I mean, what made you just say, you know what, I think I'm going to wake up today and I'm actually going to run? Uh, well, personally, I, story? you know, my story is, um, I supported <laughs> Tony Kurt Bells a couple of years ago. Never a, an official member of the Republican Party or the Democrat Party, but I get really fed up with being preached to on moral issues and ethics. The, uh, about a year and a half ago, the Libertarian Party really appealed to me because they are liberal on social issues like I am and conservative common sense on economic issues. After joining the party, I told them I would run for something uh, based on the fact that I need to satisfy my conscience and do everything I can to protect your rights. I believe wholeheartedly the rights of the individual need protecting from the collective, the supposed public good. So I volunteered to do anything I could, run for any office, and in March they asked if I'd consider putting myself on the docket for the gubernatorial ticket, and I said, yes, I'll do that. So now did you choose Chris Dock, or did the... I chose him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. yeah. yeah, I actually stepped up and went to the party uh, after we had identified Chris as a candidate for governor, and obviously he needed a lieutenant governor candidate, and I said I would be more than willing to do that. Chris and I met. Uh, and we see eye to eye on everything from a policy perspective, philosophy, everything. So we were just a really natural fit together. So One difference is I like to surround myself with people that are smarter than me, which is him. <laughs> In his case, it's not possible because he's associated I with I go for me. better looking, I guess. <laughs> okay, so I guess let's go to your backgrounds. Uh -huh. You know, what is your background and what is your background? I mean, give us a little more about yourself. My background, I'm just a normal guy with a job. I'm not a lifetime politician. I'm not a big government. Crony. What kind of job? I'm a salesman. I sell building materials wholesale. I've been doing it for 15 years. I have a couple investment properties, rental properties. I live in St. Paul. 
Um, I'm a free market guy, an entrepreneur type of guy. Um, that's my background. Married 11 years, no children, big fan of local businesses, the arts, the weather in Minnesota, you name it. Yep. And I'm a human resource technology and investment consultant. Uh, like Chris said, just a regular guy, not a career politician. I've never run for anything before. Uh, when people ask me why I'm doing this, I say that's one of the reasons is that I think career politicians have gotten us into the mess that we're in. Uh, I believe in people stepping up, doing a public service, going and fixing problems, stepping back, going back to their real lives and let somebody else come in and take the next term. So. So one of the one of the criticisms that I've heard of the Libertarian Party is that uh, you know something such as uh, the issue of welfare. You know, there's many people who depend on uh, you know health insurance that's subsidized from the government. They depend on food stamps. Uh, they depend on unemployment insurance. And uh, I think people have the perception that if a Libertarian were uh, elected into office, that they would uh, basically not vote for any of that right away. Um, is that the case? If you guys are, are elected into the uh, Minnesota governor's seat, are you just going to start uh, slashing and cutting welfare programs? Y you know, <laughs> whether it's they don't have any other options or the government's forcing them to rely on the government, those are two different philosophies. I would argue that, for example, health insurance. Right now, if you don't have health insurance, the government's going to penalize you you are basically forced to go through a state-run exchange right now. If you want to search for a, a recourse, there is none. They, they don't grow your options, they restrict your options. And I believe that's the same case in, in welfare. I believe there should be a small safety net, but I also believe it shouldn't come at the sacrifice of compassion and charity, which is what's happening right now. Yeah, the other thing I would say is that, you know, if we do look at dialing back on welfare programs, for example, that's not a day one, you go cold turkey and it's just gone. I mean, people have made life decisions based on what's in place. And if we start reducing, it's got to be on a tapering perspective. So it's not, if you know, somebody's got six kids and they're dependent on the system, it's not like one month after we're in office, they're just out of luck. So obviously there's going to be a transition process with that. Well, that and there's a misnomer that the governor can just wave a magic right. wand and make everything the way he wants it to be. It's he can't? <laughs> <laughs> you know. No, I mean, we've gotten this to this point incrementally, as you know, over 100 years or more. It's going to take that long to incrementally go back. There's still, obviously, uh, the legislature, which has. If it were all libertarians, then maybe everything would disappear. But that is a century away. Knock on wood, it will come. Now, if you look at the last time a non-Republican and non-Democrat sat in the governor's office, he managed to do one thing uh, that I don't think anybody else ever imagined, and that was get both the Republicans and the Democrats to unite against him. If you were to win, how do you plan on working with the legislature, which is not made up of a majority of libertarians? That's a really good question. To be honest, I don't know. I don't have a good answer for that. I'm not in bed with the Republicans or the Democrats. I would argue that we actually unite the Republicans and Democrats against us right now. If there's one thing they can agree on, it's excluding third parties and voices of dissent. So to get in there and as the governor, you, you channel the direction. You know, you can say, I'll sign this, I'm going to veto this. You don't have ultimate authority and power. So it would be a on-the-job training type of... Uh, yeah, and if you look at you know the top 10 issues on each side, they disagree on all 10. We actually find probably middle ground. We agree with half of what the Republicans believe on the financial side, but not social side. On the social side, we line up with the DFL very well, but not necessarily well, on the But what they say they right believe in, not what they actually Correct. do. But so ideally, we're kind of in that center cut. So I want to I want to touch base again on, on the exclusion part. We talked about it earlier in, in our discussion here. Uh, do you think that there is an active effort to exclude third party candidates? And then if there is, who are these people who are actively excluding the third parties? What is the threat that they perceive? And why wouldn't they allow you to take part in debates and forums? I mean, Minnesota touts itself as a, a democratic state and open to debate, but it doesn't seem that way, really. It doesn't seem that way. It's not that way. Y you ask if there's a active exclusion going on. Absolutely there is. Absolutely. Duluth News Tribune even said as much. Jeff Johnson said he didn't want Hanna Nicolette in this debate, which is understandable because they believe that her votes will just go to him. Now, who's pulling the strings on this? I, I don't know. I, I, like, like we've discussed, we're not in the system. We're just trying to offer an alternative to the big government system that exists. GOP, DFL, media create an establishment that is suppressing the vote 
There's no doubt about it. Look at the fact we have to get 2,000 signatures just to get on the ballot. The government gives us two weeks to do that. Look at the fact that the public tax checkoff money, the public subsidy money, it's denied to our party, to the Independence Party. It's all going to Mark Dayton and Jeff Johnson, $500,000 a piece. Is that fair? No, obviously not. But that's the way the people in power are keeping people from us out of uh, uh, sharing our voice. And do you, Chris, do you see that changing coming up? Do you see the rise of the third party? You know, are, are people getting disenfranchised enough by the deeds? A and majority the of people say that Republicans and Democrats don't align with their viewpoint. So anywhere from 56 to 65 percent of people say that neither of those parties serve their needs. And the pushback that you always get is, well, a third party is a wasted vote because they're not going to win. So that's where we explore things like ranked choice voting, where somebody could actually put a vote in for a libertarian candidate, and if on first run nobody gets 50 percent, then and libertarians come in last, then libertarians go away and whatever my second choice was. So if my second choice is for Mark Dayton, he gets it. But at least in the first run, it would say, you know, X, Y, Z, here's the distribution. Uh, there's a lot of people out there, you know, where you're at the state fair talking to people. People live their lives in a libertarian way. They do what's best for themselves and their family. They don't hurt other people. They understand that. They want freedom and those types of things. Uh, but that leap is getting to a third party candidate and thinking that they can win. And if I don't think that they can win, then I'm going to vote for the lesser of two evils. And that's what really needs to change. So I'm not saying that you know we could win in the first election. It's an eventual process. Mm -hmm. But at least it would say, hey, Independence Party, Libertarian Party, Grassroots Party, people really believe in what they stand for. And right now, people are afraid to vote that way because they think it'll just get washed out. One interesting thing that I, I see happening, and, and I see that there is a, a unifying uh, uh, force out there for the third parties. You'll, you'll see in some of the forums where multiple parties are allowed to be represented, you'll see Green Party, the Libertarian Party, and the Independence Party kind of joining arm in arm. Mm -hmm. And perhaps if you see more and more of that, uh, maybe you'd see... Uh, a stronger third party emergence over the next years but you guys are actually going to be taking a part in an event with uh, the Independence Party candidate Hannah Nicollet aren't you can you tell everyone about that um, I think so I, you know tomorrow the 19th of October 9 a.m. at Hamlin University's uh, a debate mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you call it a debate between the GOP and DFL um, they've excluded Hannah Nicollet obviously they've excluded uh, Chris Holbrook have excluded Chris Wright, the other three candidates on the ballot. So we have all planned a joint rally press conference 8 a.m. tomorrow at the campus to basically say, hey, people want to hear other voices, let our voices be heard. Don't prevent our voices from being heard. And is this an official, I'm talking about the, the debate that you were excluded from, is this an official Hamlin University? Are they t putting their name on it's this? And are they, they basically saying that we endorse the two-party system <laughs> and Anything that's outside yes of that? Yes and no. Uh, they claim it, that Fox News is renting the building from them. Okay. Go to the Hamlin University website. It says Hamlin University hosts gubernatorial debate in a partnership with Fox 9. Mm -hmm. It's an external rental for an internal group. I, I, I don't know their legalese on the 501c3 ACE regulations that they're avoiding by stating it that way, but check out their website and judge for yourself so we're uh, coming to the end of uh, our time it went pretty fast but everybody can yeah. go to uh, the website it's chris holbrook that's uh, c-h-r-i-s-h-o-l-b-r-o-o-k dot o-r-g so chris holbrook dot org uh, he's running for the governor and his uh, running mate here chris doc you, mm -hmm. you know i appreciate you guys being on the show and i'll give you guys the last uh, 30 seconds here to you know just talk about whatever you want so I would just say thank you for having us. Good luck in your future endeavors. Uh, you're a stand-up guy. I wish more people would get involved. Um, don't think you're wasting your vote by supporting a third party. We need your support more than the Democrats who already have the win baked in. Uh, get involved. That's the most important thing you can do, and think for yourself. Yeah, and if you have any questions about the Libertarian Party, we stand for liberty, freedom, responsibility. That's for your personal lives. That's for your money. Uh, it's the way that people live their lives, and we think that's the way government can work also. So it's pretty simple. Gentlemen, Chris Holberg, thank you for coming on Thanks the show. Chris, Doc, thank, thank, thank you very much. And we're going Chris. to, uh, thank you, before you guys uh, head up, we're going to just play uh, your video here as you guys leave. So Dallas, if we can line that up while we bring on our next guest. Swings at the arm booster. Into deep left center. 
from Mitchell. And the American dream lives on in Minnesota. Hi, my name is Chris Holbrook. I'm running for governor in the state of Minnesota on the Libertarian Party ticket. We believe your mind, your body, your property are yours. No one else's. Join me this November when we make a big splash for liberty in Minnesota. Oh, for governor! You read the script, oh, we said the shit. Roll the whole cool your heads on stick without prejudice. Wanna get with this? The effort, yes, we're the experts. Don't attempt it. Out, round, town, house, foundation.